Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fallout 4 Let's Play and we're here episode 5, big time fun. So I did do some uh, changes to both Sanctuary and the Red Rocket gas station between episodes as I said I was going to. Kind of important, you know, just kind of get a little bit ridiculous if I did all of that on the actual Let's Play. There are plenty of building examples out there, so I decided I wouldn't bore anybody with that, since my episodes go a little long anyway. But as we go over here, you see I've gathered all of these stations here in Sanctuary into the one core house. So those are all present there. And then really the only other thing I've done here, made sure that I put some water into place, and then all the way over here is where the bunkhouse is. So really pretty simple, made sure I had enough beds for what they're probably going to request once I finish the little bit of the storyline and they give you the whole building tutorial. Um, so that way I'll just be able to knock out a couple quests really easily. So not a huge amount to say here, but before we go and check out the other station, we are going to do one quick thing. We're going to go over here, there's one basement here in Sanctuary that's got some extra loot in it that we didn't do before when we came to clear the place out. I found it as I was cleaning all of the various structural objects out of the area. Now I just need to figure out which house was behind. Ah, here we go. And actually, oops. Looks like I actually goofed up and... Hmm. Are those actually outside the area? Oh, okay, those are outside the area. Never mind. Thought there were a couple places there that were inside the build zone. There we go. Okay. Let's go check out the root cellar. And again, the only reason I didn't do this is because I completely forgot it was here. Uncovered it as I was looking around, but it literally is just a loot cellar. There's very little other than Whoops. It's left from over there. But there's some foodstuffs. And there are some healing stuff items. Go. So it's not a, a must visit, but it definitely doesn't hurt. Make sure I pick up all these cans and that looks good. This is pretty impressive that the place has lasted as long as it has. The gold bars are an interesting grab. Dark tape with some adhesives. Some Gwinnett Stout. Cool. Shovel. Just want to make sure I'm not missing anything, that's why I turned on the light. No. <laughs> and then, really strong. we've got a lock that I can't open yet. Because I haven't upped my lock picking at all. So that'll be something I'll have to do in the near future, but we'll just come back to that once I've got that all figured out. Now I did gain four levels, and I put those into Charisma. So I can get the first of the local leader perks. It's what you need to be able to place stuff and also set up uh, go-betweens between your locations, which I now have that ability. So I wanted to make sure I had that. And of course it's set up for the, for the perks to be able to have uh, friends in town, various creatures and such. So that's what we're going to be doing with that. And now we're going to actually hoof it over to the Red Rocket, just so you can see it on approach. You can already see above the horizon there. If you look where my reticle is, you can see some of the changes to its outline. It's definitely a much bulkier building now. Because I did make it a three-story building, instead of its former two-story days. Eventually there are going to actually be uh, gun positions all the way up top to make sure that we have some extra safety mechanisms, but I ran out of loot. 
doing that. But here we are. The Red Rider truck's up. Normally this door is open, but I have closed it for the time being. We're going to go inside here. Take a look around at what we've done a little differently. Here we've got our scrap station. We'll station somebody out eventually. And here, this is where I've gathered all of the various uh, workstations. So we've got our weapons bench and a crate for explosive devices and extra weapons, especially legendaries. So you don't want to always carry all of them around. We've got our armor bench with a clothing bin. One power armor station. And the overall workshop station. Out here in the front hall, we've got our chemist station with a cooler. And out here in the yard, we have a doghouse. Eventually I'll put a dog bowl in front of it. And we've got our cooking station, complete with a campfire. Because why on earth not? Now if we move over here to the side, you'll see one of the new things. All of these panels here are actually concrete slabs. They are concrete uh, hut foundation that you can put down now with the second of the two expansions. This is one of the new constructible areas. They have a lot of concrete options. And these are concrete walls to go along with that option. This is actually going to end up being the uh, garage for the power arms. There's going to be a double wide entrance here and then walls all along with sentries at the double wide entrance to make sure that people can't get in. And then over here there will be one doorway allowing access directly into here. Back here we've got the bobblehead stand which may end up moved in here where we do have another cooler and of course the red rocket terminal tells us about the underground area. We're going to go check out the moment. And I just left this magazine here and currently we have Grognak the Barbarian there. Again, that's that whole concept that we're able to get the benefit from it without actually having to carry it with us all the time. So really nice, lets you keep your inventory a little bit more empty. Then if we go outside again, we're going to go around here. And this is how we get up to the upper floors, which is where the bunkhouse is. So we're going to go on up. And I had to finagle it a little, little bit for size issues, but finally got it right. and. You go down and we've got 15 beds here in the bunkhouse, so a lot of different growth options for the modeling. I've got a generator tucked over in the corner, linking to the center. The pile on here, which is running all of these new ceiling lights. Then I've got an upstairs floor with a ledge. This is probably going to be where various hunting trophies go. And then if we go outside the back here, We'll have various decorations and such out on the, the peak there, but then up here there will be a couple generators to run various powered uh, defensive devices. So that's going to be extremely important as we move forward. And so that's a little quick show as to what's going on here at the good old Red Rocket. As you can see from up here, I've also laid out some defensive positions that will be manned by people. And then out on the front as well, the square patches you see down there are actually garden plots so that I can do some plantings on land that isn't necessarily able to be planted on normally. That's another big change that they put in. They gave us access to those. So basically it allows you to grow even if you don't have growable land at a particular site. So that really expands what you can do with each site. This site, of course, doesn't have a lot of growable land. So that's going to let me expand and actually make this a primary settlement location instead of just a temporary. So kind of a different approach than what a lot of people are taking. And that should do it for the time being. So that's showing off those two locations. Now the only thing we're going to do now is we're going to go check out the one cave that's right near here because it kind of wraps up the whole location and it is should be right down here I think I gotta remember exactly where the heck that cave is because it's, it's right near the red rocket not back of it supposedly but we've got a cave some stuff we can do there. Oh boy, here we go. 
Man, those guys are tough. They're really very little as difficult as them. Here we go. Oh, we've got a hatchling. Which I cannot hit for that to save my soul. Well, I think he got it. Oh, jeez. The damn thing's running away from me. I don't really want to go into the center of conflict right now. So we're just going to back off and go do what we were going to do. So, this is the cave in question. Right here. Grab the little bits and pieces that are outside. Some glow fungus, always good. Make sure they're not missing anything. Alrighty. We go down in, clear out this little cave. Well, there's a couple of fun little odds and ends down here. Of course, um, in the computer files, you find that this is apparently where they did some dumping of loot in order to avoid the fees for recycling back when this place was open. And in fact, ended up getting themselves some pretty impressive kickbacks for doing so. So we've got mole rats down here. So, definitely want to make sure we take out the mole rats here. Switch over to melee weapons now. Try to save a little bit of ammo. Brain fungus. It's good stuff. Now I was reading today, they're currently working on a new survival mode for Fallout. And I'll do a Let's Play survival mode at some point in the upper future. I'm not going to bother with it anytime really soon, but there will be a Let's Play for that. Most likely a heavily stealth based one though. Let's see. More brain fungus. And you know there's gonna be some radiation down here. Let's grab what I can of the harvest tools. Try not to drink any water that might be here. Because that would just be gross. Coolant. More brain fungus. Ooh. I've sworn I heard something notice me. Oh, look at all that. <laughs> Left arm bones. A cabinet. Buried in the gunk. Go. And progress down here. Spawn, Draxo. Yeah, there's trouble. Rabbit mole rat. Well, at least there weren't any glowing mole rats like the first time I showed up here. Those things are just creepy. Oh, look at that gold plated flip lighter in there. Apparently, has some of the materials I need. That's another thing you'll notice every now and then. I will look at an item and there will be a little magnifying glass on it. And what that means is that I've marked that as one of the th as an item that I'm actively looking for. 
and the items that you're actively looking for, they actually they mark them. And when you take higher levels of the scavenger perk, items and containers around that have the items you're after will actually glow green. So it's pretty cool. Oh, wrong way. There we go. And hey, my first piece of armor. Awesome. That'll come in handy. It's not much, but it's something. Some 308 rounds. You won't find a 308 rifle for a bit, but there are ways to modify it to get things leveled up properly for yourself. Oh no, wait a minute. I may I may not have hit the right place yet. This is where we came in. Ah. What do we have about this room? As you can see, this is a bad room, but there is a completely free fusion core. As well as, this is the reward that they received <laughs> so long ago for greatest year-to-year -year waste reduction. Well, that's because they dumped it all underground. So maybe not quite as good as they had been thought of. But there we go. So that clears that out. We're going to go take a really quick look at the weapons we picked up. And then end this episode. But that was just a really quick thing. The next episode, of course, will take us into the heart of Concord. And either stop when we've reached the museum, or possibly take us all the way through it. Depending on how quickly I'm moving. with, of course, the classically hardest fight in the early game, right there in that town. But really quickly, I just want to take a look at what we acquired, weapon-wise. Always the big thing for me. So let's see here. Huh. A quick hair trickle pipe pistol and a pipe. That's actually something I've started working on right there. Here is the hard one that I've actually got working. So as you can see, you can do a lot of different modifications of the various weapons. But the biggest thing that you need a lot of throughout this is adhesive. It's the one hardest piece to come up with. But we are going to come up here. We're going to take a quick look at that radar arm I picked up. We're going to add pocketed, which I love. Lighter build just reduces the weight. That's not really a big deal for me. But I love having more carry capacity. So we're going to go ahead and put that on. And then we're going to see if it'll let us... No, nope. need adhesive again. It would let us up it all the way to tempered if I had some adhesive, but I don't right now. However... It is still the first piece of the actual gear we've picked up. So we're going to put that on. Now as you see, that actually went on over the army fatigues. There's a group of, of items that go on underneath. Okay, that's a really big thing. And most of them have increases to stats. In the case of the army fatigues that I picked up, it's strength and agility. And then, of course, this gives me a little bit of damage resistance. And for the record, these black rim glasses, uh, a.k.a. hipster glasses, they actually increase your charisma instead of your perception. They're literally the only pair that does, and I think it's an inside joke at the concept of people who wear the glasses just for looks. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stash the extra weapons in here. And again, part of this is because I don't really do much with explosives. And part of it is also just to keep this total weight here down as best we can. Now we're going to go over here. We're going to go transfer. I love this. Store all the junk. Boom. So that removes most of the weight. And then any clothing that we don't need with us goes in there. We hang on to the red wedding rings just because. Just sort of a role play thing there for me. And then, see all that? Eight items. Well, those are going to go into the cooler. 
because there's really no point in carrying around all the different meals all the time. Um, eventually we will take a look at some crafting recipes for those, but for right now we're just going to drop them off until such a time as it's necessary to start carrying some of them with us. Keep the water, keep the red away. Oh, and actually we want to keep that red X. That'll help. And there we go. Now we're down to a, a decently small amount of gear again. And that'll do it for now. So again, my name is Vela Fikasi. This has been a pleasure. This has been episode 5. And next time we will start heading down into the town. That's going to be our next goal before we start uh, branching out. Just so that we can get the last couple of bits and pieces of the tutorials out of the way. And really start playing the game for real and just going and seeing what we can find. It'll also let us get colonists put in over here at this home base of mine so that we can actually start having some real gameplay occurring and start developing the game further. And just uh, quickly one last thing. The only other thing to keep in mind is that currently as you see only those two. We don't actually have access even to the actual uh, expansion uh, quest lines yet. So that's the other reason to push the story mode forward just a little bit more to the point that it all just starts to branch out. But for right now, again my name is Vale Picastes. It's been a pleasure doing this. Please, please, please like, subscribe, and most of all share. That's how all YouTubers grow. It's how we grow our name, it's how we can make money. So definitely share the video to all of your friends. If you enjoyed it, I'll see you next time for episode 6 where we go and traipse through Concord. And as always, game on.